Hey, what's up YouTube? My name's Cameron Doherty here with another tech video. Over 20 million people trust LastPass as their password manager, and a big change took effect this week. I wanna unpack it with you, let's talk. Take a look at your phone at all the different apps that you have, and think about just how many of them require you to have an account. So for me, in my case, I've got an Apple ID, for my iPhone. I have a lot of Google apps that require a Google account. I have various travel apps, Uber, Lyft, Marriott, things like that. Then I have different social media accounts, Instagram, Facebook, I've got shopping apps like Amazon. Every single one of these requires you to have an account. And with those accounts, you have a lot of passwords. Now, if you can remember every single one of those passwords on the top of your head, then you're either a genius or more likely you're doing something wrong with your passwords. See, a hacker has two different ways to access your information. They can guess your password or they can get your password. In the case of guess, if you have a really simple password, like just using the, the word password, then they can simply guess what you've used. This also is the case if you have readily available public information that somebody might be able to locate, such as your birth date as your password. On the other hand, get is more likely when there is a data breach. So on one site, when a data breach occurs and your password is leaked, if you use that same password on another site, they can try to use that to access your information there. In either case, the hacker can get into your information if you're using simple passwords and if you're using the same password. This is where a password manager comes into play. So what a password manager allows you to do is to store all of those passwords together in one place and access all of them with a single master password. So now rather than having to memorize all of those different passwords or use the same password, it allows you to just create one strong password and use that to access all of your other accounts. That's the basics, but then on top of that, different password managers will have additional offerings to try and entice you to use their platform or as a premium offering as a paid service. And so these can vary, but they might include allowing you to autofill your passwords into uh, your browser on your computer or into your directly into your app on your phone. It could also help generate those passwords so that it can create a strong password and a random password for you rather than you having to come up with one yourself. It also might analyze all of your passwords, recommending places to improve either when you're repeating passwords or using passwords that aren't strong. And finally, there could be something like a monitoring service looking for your information out on the web somewhere where it might be problematic. And ultimately what this does is it allows you to create stronger passwords and also utilize unique passwords. So a strong password prevents the hacker from being able to guess, as we've talked about, and the unique password prevents them from the get function. So collectively, this is how a password manager helps mitigate those risks. And for me, LastPass has been my password manager of choice for years now. And so let's talk about them specifically and what's happened this week. Of all the apps on my phone, LastPass has consistently been the one that I recommend to the most people. Family, friends, there have been numerous people that I have converted over to LastPass from either using a different password manager or using more likely no password manager at all. And the reason why I've stuck with it is that they've offered so many features to their free users, and it's always been so easy and so intuitive. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the features or any sort of deep dive on what LastPass can do. If you're interested in that, though, let me know down in the comments, and I'm happy to make a video about that. Let's focus on what's changing about LastPass and why these changes are happening. So it all stems from late 2019 and into 2020 when LastPass's parent company, LogMeIn, was acquired for $4.3 billion by a private equity firm. If you know anything about private equity firms, they're coming in when they see an opportunity to monetize and to increase revenue streams. And so that's what they've been trying to do. They've been trying to get more of LastPass's users that were using the free app to sign up for premium. And what they're doing is they're starting to whittle away at those features that I loved and that made LastPass such a full-featured, 
you know, no brainer when it came to choosing a password manager. And so the first thing they did was a little bit less consequential, but there was a feature called the security challenge. What this did is this was, when I talked about my more premium features, this was in the analyze function. So this looked at all the passwords that you had. It analyzed whether there were duplicates, whether anything was not strong enough, or whether there was something that hadn't been changed in a really long time. It then gave you a score that was easy to see how well you were doing with managing your passwords. So this was one of the best features for new users because you could put all of your existing passwords in without thinking and considering whether or not they were good ones and let LastPass identify what needed to be changed and what needed work. Now, I totally admit that this is a premium feature and it's totally fair that they would wanna charge for this because it goes above and beyond the basics of me managing my passwords and using the platform as where I enter my master password just to access those things. This is enhancing that experience. But now let's get to the most recent change. So in February, a blog post came out on LastPass's website, as well as an email to current users. And it talked about the upcoming change that takes effect today. And what that change is, is around what devices you can use your free account on. So for me, for years, I've been using LastPass on multiple devices. I've got a desktop computer, a laptop computer, my iPhone, and then also an iPad. And so those four devices were primarily what I would be accessing my account on. What this change today is, is making happen is that the, the two computers are now considered one device type, whereas the iPad and iPhone are considered another device type. So we have computers, we'll say, and mobile. And where you used to be able to freely use the app in both places to look things up, to autofill, do everything else, now, LastPass is saying, if you're a free user, you have to choose whether you want to be able to use your app on your computer or use your app on mobile. And this takes effect today, as I mentioned. So wherever you log in first, if you're a current user, that's where you're going to get locked. And they do allow up to three changes. So if you weren't aware that this change was coming, you do still have an opportunity to change it, but ultimately you will have one. And this really cuts into the core functionality of what a password manager is, that we should be able to put your passwords in, use a master password, and get your password out. And when we have to choose between one device type or another, that really makes it a much less compelling offering from LastPass if you're not willing to pay for the premium features. So what does this all mean? Is it time to jump ship? Is, should we stick around? Like, what, what do you think? Can I still, in good conscience, recommend LastPass as a service? Let's talk more about that. LastPass operates as what is often referred to as a freemium offering. So this comes from the fact that they have both their free available service as well as their premium service or a paid version of that service. There's a lot of different freemium offerings out in the marketplace, but generally in my view, they come in two main flavors. There's the first type where what you get as a free user is almost the same as a premium user, but you get some sort of enhanced experience. Think about Amazon. As a free user, I can buy anything on Amazon, but when I subscribe to Prime, I get free shipping and I get additional features on top of that. Similarly on YouTube, I can watch any video on YouTube as a free user, but when I subscribe as a premium user, then I don't have to watch any ads. Those are situations where the free user gets really the full experience, but there's just a little bit more they can get by paying. On the flip side of that, the second possibility is an app where the experience is intentionally restricted or made worse, quite frankly, in order to encourage the user to pay. So think about those cell phone games that you download, where maybe for every 30 seconds of game time, you're met with a 30 second ad. It really just makes it un unplayable and something that's unpleasant to experience, encouraging you to pay those few dollars to get rid of the ads. Another example is a content app, maybe a fitness app, for example, where there is a very large library available to premium users but the free user only gets a couple workouts. So it's really more of a free trial than anything. 
but they advertise it as if they have a free and a premium. But are you really going to do the same workout over and over and over again and not get access to the rest of it? In either case here, the developer has intentionally made the experience somewhat negative so that you either pay or get out. So where does LastPass fit on this sort of spectrum? I can absolutely say with certainty that for years now, they have sat in that first camp. You obviously had access to all of their core features. You had access to great additional features like the security challenge. And there was a premium offering that added even more, but the free offering was great. Now, when they start to take away those additional features, they gradually start to move towards that second group, which is much less desirable. And ultimately, when they take away the core functionality and limit you to one device type, they're kind of pushing themselves into that second group where they're intentionally making their product worse and making it unusable to some unless you pay. And this can be frustrating and makes it really challenging. So now, what do I think? I think I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed to see a platform that I've loved for so long turn into something that is no longer going to be valuable to a free user and where you really have to pay to get value out of it. So. If you're an existing user now, you really have three options. You can either adapt to these changes, you can leave and find some other way to manage your passwords, or you can pay. And what am I doing? Well, unfortunately, I'm gonna be paying. I've used this service for so long, it's so ingrained in the way that I work and in the way that I manage everything. And I've brought so many people over to the platform with me that I'm planning to get a family plan and bring the people closest to me onto it. Uh, in order to keep this as cheap as possible, but to keep these features available. In the meantime, I'm definitely going to be looking for other services because I would love to find another free option that is similar to LastPass, uh, but still has those offerings available for their free users. If you're not an existing LastPass user, I think you should look elsewhere. When I look at the two options here of desktop only, PC only uh, versus mobile only, I can't really see one that works in anyone's favor. Unless you truly only use a computer and don't have a phone, or if you live in that magical world of somebody that could live off of just an iPhone and an iPad, for example, and never have to touch a desktop. Unless you're in one of those two realities that I think are so slim these days, if you don't cross over, then that, those would be the only situations where you could possibly use this successfully. So I'm disappointed. That's what it comes down to. I'd love to hear what you guys think though. Tell me, did I miss something? Is there a password manager out there that I don't know about yet that fits all of these boxes and that I should be looking into? Because I will absolutely take a look at it and report back with what I find. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, please consider subscribing. And I can't wait to tell you more in the next video. Thanks.